Okay, everyone, here's the deal. I know a lot of you probably aren't fish people, but guess what? It's another one of my hobbies. And so today I wanted to show you a tank. I have many tanks, but this one is the one I just most recently set up and I'm just so happy with it. And I recorded the whole process and I wanted to share it with you guys. My hope is that even if you may not be a fish person, you can still appreciate this hobby of mine, fish keeping, but also something that I'm starting to dabble in, which is aquascaping. Anyway, thanks for clicking on this video and joining me today, and I hope you enjoy all the footage. All right, we're gonna start this video about a month ago. Yes, I have been compiling footage for a month now. And it all started with this tank that I saw super cheap on uh, Facebook Marketplace, I believe it was. It's another 29 gallon. So the previous tank I have, which is the very first footage in this video, is a 29 gallon that I purchased to set up this riverscape and I was gonna put neon tetras in it only. And that was gonna be the neon tetra tank. When it came time to go to the store and start like picking out the fish <laughs> that we wanted, uh, the barbs caught our attention. We kind of decided as a family, because this was the first tank was a family project, I guess you could call it. Um, I just felt like the neons didn't fit. It was a very natural setting. It looked very local and, um, you know, it was all these natural elements from central Virginia because that's where we picked. We got the wood out of our yard and the rocks from a local river, blah, blah, blah. And so the neons didn't feel right. We wanted something that felt a little more native and we don't really have that many super, you know, colorful fish locally. So even though barbs are not a native fish either, they felt a little more appropriate in the tank. So that's what we started with there and I scrapped the idea for a neon tank and then over time I just I decided I still wanted it so <laughs> when I saw this tank I said I'm gonna set this up and this is gonna be the tank that the first one was gonna be so that was the whole plan uh, when I picked this one up I did have a second tank that came with it it was a advertised as a five gallon but it definitely is not it's more like two and a half gallons um, that one is still sitting on a shelf I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think that one might become a shrimp tank for uh, my son's room, my other son, my son's room, the two that share a room. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. But for now, the first tank had to be cleaned, rinsed out, and then prepared. After doing some research, I decided that this tank was going to be what is known in the fish community as a father fish tank. Basically what that means is you put down a layer of mud, a layer of sand, a deep layer of sand. You add lots of plants and then you add micro fauna as in little tiny little microscopic bugs that can hang out in the tank and the fish can feed upon it. I heard of this method and as somebody who has a little, a very limited, but a little background in permaculture, this just made so much sense to me. This method is very controversial. Some people think that this guy's a total nut job and some people think he's brilliant. I happen to believe that this method just seems to make a lot of sense. You're basically setting up a little ecosystem inside of your tank. So I decided to give it a try with this tank. At worst case scenario, the fish get moved out and we try something else, but it has been working in my other tank pretty well. My other tank is not a true father fish tank, but it's pretty much, it's, it's very, very close. And that tank has been very stable and it's been going wonderfully. So we're giving it a try in this one. So next was the sponge filter. I put that in place just to see what it looked like. And then it was time to construct a little elevated wall. So I had known from the beginning I wanted some sort of elevation change in the back of this tank. It is a little challenging to do with sand though. If you just angle the sand over time, it will just fall down and everything will be flat anyway. So I started making this rock wall. I used a little bit of crafter's mesh in there too to give it some stability and also Ultimately what I wanted to do was fill the cracks with moss and the mesh behind the rocks will give something for the moss to kind of grab onto and grow out of. So that was the plan. I did use a little bit of Gorilla Glue which is pretty common in the industry inside the aquarium because it is aquarium safe. The only thing is it dries this horribly bright white color so I tried to cover that with sand, figured the java moss would grow on top of it eventually and yeah that did not work. Even now, it's just still a very, very bright white, but 
Oh well, it is what it is. Okay, I just had to pause for that. <laughs> Sand is so satisfying to listen to. Okay, so the structure was done. The sand was leveled and everything was glued. So really all I could do at this point was stand back, take a look, make sure everything looked okay, adjust a little bit, and just wait for it to dry. And then after it dried for overnight, the next day I got in there and started stuffing some java moss everywhere I could fit it. <laughs> When I got everything looking just exactly how I wanted it to look, it was time to fill it with water. So the best way to do this in a tank that has a bunch of sand especially is to put down a plate. I put down a plate and a colander <laughs> just to be extra sure and uh, filled it slowly. The thing is you cannot disrupt that sand. If the barrier between the sand and the dirt underneath breaks, that is an enormous problem. Um, but you do not want that dirt, which is full of nitrogens and, or I'm sorry, nitrates and ammonia and things that are great for plants, but horrible for fish. You do not want that seeping into your water column. So you just have to be extra careful when you fill it. So when you're done filling, take out the bowl, take out the plate, and uh, then you got to fix any sand that got displaced during the process. And then you're in the money time to plug in the filter and see if it works. So for this tank, we actually used a sponge filter. I have never used a sponge filter in any of my tanks before. I've always been a hang on the back girl. And so this was a new experience, but we picked this because I knew this particular tank was gonna have a lower water level just because of the plan I had in mind. And uh, the hob filters or hang on backs tend to be a little noisy when the water drops into the water. <laughs> So this was our bedroom, so we wanted it to be a little quieter. Okay, next it was time for plants. I headed to the hardware store because I had previously found a ton of Lucky Bamboo that was discounted. <laughs> and this time I did not find any discounted. I just grabbed a couple. I already had a bunch in my other tank that I was using for this tank. So I pulled out of that and put it in here. But this is where the drama in this story started because I bought plants online. Oh my gosh, I bought plants online. I waited so long for those plants. They show up and they are an absolute catastrophe. That will be what I show you in two seconds, but I have to explain to you that I ordered pearl weed and what I ended up with was this. For the record, I have never had pearl weed in my tanks before. This looks suspicious to me right off the bat, but I didn't know any better. So in the pamphlet I got with the plants, it said, sometimes plants arrived a little damage, which I know to be true. Go ahead and plant it, it should recover. So like an idiot, I put it in the tank. I put it in the tank and I tried to plant it and it just was breaking apart and oh my gosh, it was a mess. It was a mess. I've never put anything in my tanks that did what this plant did. It was a catastrophe. Um, I actually recorded this right after I planted everything. So I just put the new plants in the tank and I'm honestly kind of discouraged. I don't, I'm just not thrilled with them. The last tank I did just came together so seamlessly and it was just more a matter of adding some elements to it. This one is gonna be a test in my patience, I think. I have to wait for these things to fill out. I have to wait for some of this stuff flowing to the top, see if it's gonna live or not now. Cause a lot of these things when I put them in just kinda immediately start falling apart. So this is a plan I'm unfamiliar with on how it's gonna do in water, so we'll see. But I'm just a little bummed. <laughs> a little bummed out, a little deflated today after putting these plants in and it was a struggle in the first place to get them in and now i don't know they look kind of pale and sad so we'll just see how it goes i guess these things just were a wreck they absolutely littered the tank they just broke apart at the entire top of the tank looked terrible it was a mess so I went ahead and went on to eBay to the seller where I got it from. I messaged them and I told them one that the plants were falling apart and two that I wasn't entirely sure it was the plant I ordered and they did not respond at all. They did not respond to me. So I went ahead and I 
started a return process because that was an option for this order and just waited to see what they would say. In the meantime, to make myself feel better because I was so bummed about this whole thing, I went to the pet store and I got fresh plants. <laughs> I got new ones that were not falling apart that I could visually see look good and I put those in the tank. I totally forgot to mention I also from the same seller bought red root floaters that showed up with brown roots and they're still in my tank now. I was hoping they'd turn themselves around. So far, no luck. They are still brown rooted and are very, very pale green and I probably should take them out of the tank. Also worth mentioning, I decided to put one of my mystery snails in the tank just to see how he would do. And what I didn't realize is that all those decaying plants had tremendously spiked the ammonia in my tank. I did not know that. That is totally my fault. I should have kept an eye on the water with these plants. Instead, I sentenced my poor snail to his doom. And unfortunately, he did not make it even 24 hours. I feel horrible about that. By the next day or so, maybe it was two days at this point, I still hadn't heard from the seller, so I decided to go ahead and move forward with the return. It was just such a bear. Oh my gosh, was this such a process trying to get all these plants out of the tank and then try to remove the pieces of dead plant from the ones that I may or may not be dead anyway, but the red root floater. So I had to split those up from these other ones. It was, it was a mess. But there was nothing else I could do and the, the seller was not responding. And so I picked everything out. I gathered up as much as I could. I put it back in the original shipping package and I sent it back. During this time, I decided to like go on their page and just see the status of my return. I kept checking to see if they were gonna to respond to me and I decided to go look at their eBay page and lo and behold, gone. They have nothing for sale anymore. The website that was sent along with the box, like they had a whole pamphlet with their website and everything. Like they looked like a very legit seller website doesn't work and so and they had reviews and everything not like the best reviews in the world but i think they were like 98 percent rated so not terrible so i don't know i don't know what happened with tra this transaction this company or whatever but in any case all the plants had to go the thing is with setting up this tank the way that i was trying to set it up it is imperative that you get it heavily planted as soon as possible so I was just so frustrated that it took a minute to get the plants in the first place they basically arrived dead I had to redo everything now wait on a return on these plants and so even though I picked some up locally it just isn't as densely planted as I wanted it to be so I went back on eBay I found someone with a hundred percent selling rating and I contacted them and I said hey I'm interested in buying this plant which again was pearl weed I, can you send me a picture of it, of what you have growing? I didn't want to just see some stock photo and then you get whatever. Like I wanted to make sure that this guy was gonna send me exactly what I wanted. And he was super communi communicative. He sent me the pictures and, um, and all was good. So I went ahead and I purchased plants again <laughs> online from this guy and I waited some more. The exciting update to this tank while I was waiting was that it grew a lot of algae. Now some people really hate algae, but I really love algae because it shows that there is life inside of this tank. Also on the glass, if you looked up close, you could see little nibble marks, which means that there is a snail that probably snuck in on that java moss. At least one of them making a meal out of the algae on the glass. So before I wanted to plant the new stuff in the tank, I decided to clean off the front uh, the front wall, I guess you could call it, of this aquarium. And this is my common practice in, in all my tanks. I clean off the viewing wall and I leave everything else however it wants to grow just because there's things inside of the tank that like to eat algae. And it's not necessarily a bad thing for your tank. This little green algae that just kind of makes a very, you know, very pretty, very light covering on everything. It's not a bad thing. So I like to leave it as much as I can. All right, so now that I've kind of wiped down the algae on the front so I can see what I'm doing, I gotta get these guys planted. So now that these guys are here, I feel like these guys have to go in there first. And I'm hoping too, once 
all these things are planted that this little, this brown algae that's starting to grow and everything will chill out a little bit. Cause what's happening is there's excess nutrients in the tank and it's feeding the algae because there's not enough plants to suck it all up. So that's my theory and hopefully it's true. I have a lot of these, it turns out this is a Ludwigia, I think is how you see it. Repens. Um, I have a few extra. I broke some off and planted them already, but I think I'm going to give some of these to my son's tank. He just set up a new tank himself, so we'll save some for him. Alright, so here's here's the new stuff. Can you guys see this is a pearl weed? This is what I ordered. You guys can see, look how it looks really good compared to the last stuff I ordered. Alright, I have another one of those to plant, but I also got this uh, penny wart and you guys can see there's the silhouette of it obviously upside down this should be such like a pretty addition to this tank this is going to go in the corners and after I plant this then I'll put the rest of the the pearl weed in I just felt like this should go in first so All right, there we are for now. It's gonna look so much better once things start growing in. I'm not sure about this penny wart. Uh, hopefully those things start staying more upright and it looks a little more visually interesting. Same with over here right now, it looks kinda sad. Planting it makes me feel like I'm either gonna really love this plant or really hate it, <laughs> so we'll see. I've left algae on the side of the tank that's um, intentional. I don't wanna take clean that off. This here in this pink bag is actually uh, micro sword, which I did not want to plant in this tank. That's for another project. So I just put it in there for now to float it and keep it alive until I address the other tank. That's going to be another video, I suppose. So this is it. Now we're still waiting on the background. Oh, and I threw that whale in there. <laughs> That's definitely not going to be the centerpiece of this tank. He's just there. He's just there for now. So it's a little onyx stone thing. So. It's definitely getting more of that natural vibe going. I'm, I'm happy so far. I think it's gonna look really good once things start growing in. And I'm really excited about, about that. So now it's just, now we just wait and see how this thing develops. But the next step is gonna be one, getting that background on there, which I hope just kind of makes the entire tank pop. And then also I need to put fish in it, which I could do now, I'm tempted to go do that today, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. And also, the other thing is I'm waiting to see how these red root floaters do because they do not have red roots. I'm not sure if they're alive or not, like if they're growing or they're just slowly dying off because when I got them, all the roots were brown, but the leaves still look okay. So I don't know, remains to be seen on those guys. But to me, I'm just not thrilled with them. I just look like there's a bunch of debris at the top of the tank, but where we stand for now. Throughout this process, I had been keeping a close eye on the water parameters, except for the unfortunate incident with the snail. I just, I totally slipped there, but definitely after that, I was testing my water daily, sometimes multiple times a day, and finally the thing cycled. It finally cycled itself, even though the plan wasn't necessarily to cycle the tank in the traditional sense, it happened anyway. So. With all this algae growing, I decided it was time to add in the cleanup crew. This included six blue shrimp and one magenta mystery snail from another tank. Unfortunately, when I added them to the tank, I forgot to record. Well, rather, I started to record, but I did that thing where you think you're recording, but you 
didn't. And when you go to stop the recording, that's when you actually start the recording. So yeah, I missed all the action, but in any case, here they are in the tank. The very interesting thing about this footage of the snail is that I noticed upon editing this video that you can see the microfauna that made its way into the tank. I did not put that there. I had intentions of adding some to the tank when I was ready to do so after everybody was in and acclimated but they must have come in on some plants and it wasn't a bad thing because later and spoiler alert when i added fishes to it <laughs> or fish rather um, i watched them eat them so i saw them swim around and, and pick them off the wall and make some meals out of them so that actually kind of worked out perfectly i haven't had any issues with those little bugaboos and in fact they are a natural and healthy part of many ecosystems you know the ecosystem inside of your tank so i'm not mad about it I just was surprised they're so small I can't see them really well with my own eyes, but I sure saw them on this camera. With this tank, I wanted it to be finished before I added any fish, but it was taking so long to get this background that I decided to just go ahead and get the neons. So I went to the store and I got them. Uh, I brought home 13, one I got for free because he wasn't doing so hot and I was hoping maybe once I got him to some clean water he would be okay, but unfortunately he did not even make it out of that bag. Um, and just also for the record, the way I acclimate fish into this tank is uh, the drip method, well modified drip method. You can actually have a drip hookup so that tank water is slowly dripping into their bag. But uh, what I do is I just get a turkey baster and I add a little bit of my tank water to their bag over the course of a couple hours or so. Um, and also I just make sure their temperatures match first before I start that process. So it is a somewhat slow process, but it has been effective and I haven't had any issues. Uh, some people just dump them in, um, you know, you do you, I'll do me. <laughs> I don't advise that, but in any case, these guys have all done great. So with the exception of the one that, you know, didn't make it. Um, the other 12 have been fantastic, so I was really happy for that. A few days after I got the fish into the aquarium, the background finally showed up and it was terrible. <laughs> it was just a bear. I should have put soap on the back of the aquarium before I tried to apply this thing, just based on the sticky nature of the thing, but I hated the way it looked anyway. It just, the lines on it weren't very sharp like the image wasn't very sharp it had kind of a bluish tint to it it's kind of hard to tell from the footage but it did and i just didn't like it i took it down my whole idea was to have a bamboo background and then have the bamboo in the foreground so it kind of looked like you know the, the bamboo was kind of coming out of the background but it it didn't work it didn't work and i still don't know what i'm gonna do with this aquarium now like i said we're a month through this whole process now and I still don't have a background for it but anywho in the meantime after everything went well with the uh the neon tetras a few days passed by I'd been like a week with them I kept checking my water my water was good water was good water was good so I slowly you know added for a few more things into here so the small things were two very small mystery snails that I got from a friend and then the big thing was my new favorite addition to this tank <laughs> which is rabbit rabbit the pleco he is a bristlenose pleco he should not get too terribly big this is kind of like the minimum tank size you want for one of these guys um but he is just so efficient at his job and um, i'll share a little more about him in a second but i also went ahead and put in my goldstone bear in there in place of where the fish was i still don't know if this is going to end up being the centerpiece of this tank but for now that is what it is and actually it is super sparkly under the overhead light so <laughs> it's working out for now so i guess for now we will leave it the way it is i do not anticipate getting any more inhabitants in this tank anytime soon in fact i'm already thinking about taking a couple of the snails out and putting them into my other 29 gallon um and uh, i don't know we'll see we'll see but i did put three red shrimp in here as well so we've got three the total list is <laughs> three red shrimp, six blue shrimp, one magenta mystery snail, two jade mystery snails, and then one blue mystery snail, the pleco, and 12 neon tetras. This is again a 29 gallon aquarium. If the pleco does seem to grow out this tank, um, he'll be going eventually into a 55 gallon with the fish from the other tank that are 
currently growing out in the leather tank, so we'll move him around if need be, but for now, he's just fine in here and doing an awesome job. All right, this is how the aquarium is looking today. It's even changed just since, I, I thought I was done recording film for this video, but I was in the middle of editing and I was like, man, it's already looking different, even just after a few days of having Rabbit the Plucko. Rabbit the Plucko the weirdo. I gave him a little uh, treat because he's done such a great job. I put shrimp in here and I'm just waiting for them to clean stuff. Been waiting for them to clean stuff. And man, I put it in Rabbit the Plecko. He has done work. I mean, look at the rocks. The rocks are clean. The walls are all clean. He loves this sponge filter. He loves it. <laughs> He's keeping that clean too. He loves that thing. He goes inside of it. I'll show you a little clip of him. He goes in there. We've dubbed that the rabbit hole now because rabbit loves it. Um, he goes behind it, under it, in it. He loves that thing, so. Anywho, he earned his little treat. Of course, now I scared him to the back corner, but. Anywho, I just had to show you guys how the tank is looking. Right now, I still haven't figured out the background. I'm playing with some fake ivy back there. And I might just put that behind the tank to just kind of fill it in a bit, but there it is. So I hope you all really enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. It was a labor and love, but man, look at the result. This is just too cool. My parameters are awesome. This tank is just doing great. I haven't lost any of the Tetras except for the one that died on the way home. So he never even was in the tank, but we've got all 12 Tetras here and everybody's doing fantastic. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It is free and a fantastic way to support channels. Um, don't just do it for me, do it for everybody that you appreciate making content. And yeah, let me know if you want to see more tanks or more footage like this, or if you have a suggestion for another video, if you'd like to see a new craft for me to try a new craft or see more of my hobbies, because <laughs> my goodness, there's a lot of them. All right, y'all, thanks so much for joining me today. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.